Well, finally tonight, we are following the story of Maria Juarez, a woman living in southwest Detroit and facing deportation. We called this one Detroit series 21 Days to Exile to give our viewers a sense of this process playing out in real time over the last few weeks. But now it is just one day. Maria is set to be deported on Friday, May 26. She was brought to the U.S. when she was just a baby. Now she's married. She has a son of her own. But her case is not typical. She committed crimes when she was a teen. And though she's changed her life and appealed to stay in the country, she has few options left. This is not a simple case, but it is a look inside of a complicated system, how the policies of different administrations can change and what deportation can do to a family. This story is also being reported by our partners with the Detroit Journalism Cooperative. Chastity pratt Dawsey of Bridge Magazine picks up the story from here. We're talking about deportation, we're talking about immigration, how complicated the stories are that involve the people who are at the center of these debates. We've been following Maria Garcia Juarez's story for the last three weeks, from the time she heard she'd have to go. She's 23 years old, leaving behind a husband in southwest Detroit who's waiting for a transplant to treat his leukemia and a one-and-a-half-year-old son with medical issues of his own. Juarez has not been to Mexico since she was a baby, coming to the U.S. at just eight months old. I don't know if it's going to help me much, but I definitely don't mind sharing my story and, you know, letting people know that this is not okay. Maria Garcia Juarez is getting ready to leave for Mexico this week as she faces deportation. My life is set here. I do not know the first thing about Mexico. Juarez's problems go back to when she was a juvenile, using drugs and stealing cars in Salinas, California, a town where gangs and crime are a way of life. Since coming to Michigan more than five years ago, her record has been clean, something of a model citizen. A lot of us are in a place where our grandparents and great-grandparents really went through years and years and years of personal ordeal to get legal in this country. And for folks out there to be saying, Trump is evil, the Republicans are evil, they hate immigrants, that's a bunch of malarkey. Let's take one more call here, Daniel in Detroit. You know, she broke the law, but at what point do we get a handle on this illegal immigration in this country? You know, I didn't vote for Trump, but I'm all for getting a handle on this because it's completely out of control. It was nice talking on the radio, sharing my story. It's just sad that, you know, I get this, this response is that people just still don't understand the reasons why. And I know that matters to immigration. They just care. You did it. You're illegal. Get out. What is it, 11 million people in this country illegally right now? If you look at what's happened over the last eight years, I mean, we're at the lowest level of people coming here illegally in, I don't know, in decades. This idea that there's a crisis now, I think, is somewhat manufactured. I guess I'd also make the point that, Perhaps the crisis is fueled by immigration law itself. We've learned with this story, immigration law is complex. Getting more legal opinions is recommended in cases like Maria's. With just a few days left before deportation, she managed to find two more immigration lawyers to take a last look at her case. Something that did come up in both conversations with both attorneys, they asked me, why didn't I apply for DACA? And I told them every attorney has advised me not to, which I went through maybe four or five attorneys that had advised me not to go through DACA. I did not qualify. And that's the means by which she could stay because she was right. brought here as a child. Because she was brought here as a kid, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they both told me, you still can apply. Um, as far as they'll deny it, there's, you know, there's always a risk. They could you know, deny it due to their discretion. But under the law, you are still eligible because uh, the law says, you know, juvenile adjudications, because my, my things were not convictions, they were adjudications. So it's like under the law, um, it says that juvenile adjudications do not have immigration consequences. That's exactly what it says in the book. So both attorneys said it is worth a try. With the clock ticking, Juarez now has her hopes riding on her immigration officer. I went on Friday morning, I handed over the letter, and she told me, she said, I'm not gonna see anything until I see the paperwork. So she's giving you an opportunity to file the emergency stay. As far as, you know, her reaction and what I interpreted, yes, she's giving me an opportunity because she would have said no. And from my understanding, as long as it's submitted, if it's pending, I cannot be deported until they make a decision on it, as far as I understand. 
Even with the emergency stay, Juarez doesn't expect it to last long, maybe a week, a bit more or less, before Immigration and Custom Enforcement says she has to go. But then again, ICE could find in her favor and she might not have to go anywhere. It's a long shot, but that's what she's hoping for. The stay doesn't work. What does Friday look like? So Friday, I have uh, ISIS meeting me at the airport at 6.30 in the morning. Um, Still have the tether? Yes, they said they will remove it at the airport. There's gonna be some officers there waiting for me. Um, they'll walk me through security and they will remove my tether as soon as I board the plane and they would wait until the plane departs. They're gonna wait, you know, I say goodbye to my family and they wait till my plane departs and if for any reason the plane would, you know, you know, do an emergency landing, whatever, they would get notified. So they definitely don't, she's like, we don't leave until we see the plane go. And we will keep Bless. updating Maria's story for any last minute changes and to chronicle her goodbye. Come back to myweek.org, we'll have it there. Plus you can see all the earlier stories that we have done with Maria explaining more in depth her legal situation and the choices that she has made. And as we told you earlier in the show, my week is heading to Mackinac. Don't worry, we'll bring you back some fudge. We're covering the conference during the day and online, so you can see everything at myweek.org and on Facebook Live. And then settle in at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. We'll have a special My Week each night, catching you up on all the big news and the conversations from Mackinac Island. That will do it for us. Have a great holiday weekend, and we will see you from Mackinac Island next week. Take care. <laughs>